Hey folks, welcome to the Nuclear Engineering Laboratory at the University of New Mexico. I'm Carl Willis. We're going to have some fun today painting pictures with beta particles. And the reason we're doing it today is because I just went on eBay and uh, got some, uh, some fun stuff. This is radiochromic film. It turns colors when radiation hits it and gives it a dose. and uh, it requires no developer, so it's a little bit unlike regular film. And we can simply expose it to a source and look at what happens. So that's what we're going to do today. I've got a uh, light box set up. We're going to put pieces of film in front of the light box. And then over here, we're going to uh, clamp a eye applicator that is a strontium-90 source. These are very intense sources of radiation. so. Uh, Naturally, I'm going to evacuate the area and we'll just let the cameras watch the radiochromic film get uh, exposed. To make this kind of fun, I have a hidden surprise behind the light box, which is a um, very strong permanent magnet. And this guy has uh, two um, N50 grade neodymium magnets placed um, across a piece of plastic. So the magnetic field lines are going from pole to pole in this direction. And you'll see one side is labeled B and one side is labeled A. And what we're going to do is first just expose uh, one piece of radiochromic film to the strontium-90 source. Then we're going to place the magnet uh, here behind the light box, and we're going to take two films with the magnet. We're going to have one film where the A side of that magnet is up, and another film where the B side is up. And from the information that we get from those images, we should be able to tell which side of the magnet is the north pole and which side is the south pole. So anyway, that's our uh, plan for today. I'm going to go get this set up. All I'm going to do is take out a piece of my film. And you'll see they keep it in a nice uh, uh, black bag here. This, by the way, if you had to buy this new, I think it's about $1,000 uh, for the package. But uh, this is what the stuff looks like. It's kind of a green color. and. Um, I'm not going to use this one because it's damaged on the edge. This, by the way, is expired. Um, and uh, that's why it was 30 bucks on eBay rather than a lot more expensive somewhere else. <clears throat> We're just going to set up our film right here like this. And now we're ready to go. And for my first experiment, I'm going to take the magnet away. I'm going to put it a long way away. And now I'm ready to use my radiation source. So the radiation source I'm going to be using today is uh, down here. It is a, originally it was a uh, 55 millicurie strontium-90 pterygium applicator, pterygium. I am not a uh, anatomist, so forgive me if my pronunciation is wrong. Anyway, in September of 1985, this bad boy delivered 47.4 centigrades per second. So a whopping dose, really. But let's get started.
The chemical mechanism of the gaff-chromic film involves radiation-induced polymerization of colorless diacetylene monomers to form colored polymers. This process forms long chains having an extensive system of conjugated pi bonds, and that is what gives these polymers their blue color. The colorimetric response of this film is quite nonlinear and is uneven between the three primary colors as the dye develops. The film manufacturer recommends digitizing the film with a very costly 16-bit per channel flatbed scanner for radiation therapy dosimetry, which is the principal application for this film. And that explains the unitization on the vertical axis of this dose response diagram from Gafchromic. To help us better see the polymer dye form in this video, I've set up a rather mental set of color curves to use when I render the video in order to provide high contrast for the dye. We'll re-watch this first film and then watch the two subsequent ones using these color curves. Alrighty, so we are going to put the A side of this magnet up now. Right now there's no magnet. I'm going to put the A side up just like that. So we have a magnetic field now uh, on our film.
<laughs> so here we go. We're gonna pull off the A-side magnet. We're gonna flip this bad boy around so that the B-side now is up. And uh, I gotta turn it around, okay. Um, so now the magnetic field is pointing opposite of where it was before. And we'll go ahead and take a, uh, another film. To make sense of these images, we can identify three major regions where strong magnetic fields are present in the plane of the film in this experiment. And to each of these regions, labeled 1, 2, and 3, we'll apply the left-hand rule, which is equivalent to the right-hand rule of the classical Lorentz force law, but for negatively charged particles like our strontium-90 beta particles. Let your left thumb represent the direction of travel for the electrons. In this demonstration, it points to the left. If the magnetic field, which you can represent with your left index finger, points up, the beta particles are forced outwards from the plane of the film. The force on the particles can be represented by your left middle finger. If the magnetic field points downward, the beta particles are forced inward toward the film and will darken it. One possible configuration is shown now. In regions 1 and 3, the magnetic field points up, and in region 2, it points down. Beta particles moving right to left in the air in front of the film will be blown outwards in regions 1 and 3 and into the film in region 2, darkening it there. The other possible configuration is the opposite with magnetic field pointing downwards in regions 1 and 3 and upward in region 2. Here we expect to see beta particles blown into the film in regions 1 and 3, darkening it there, and blown outward in region 2, leaving it lightly pigmented. Comparing these simple models to the two films we took with the magnet in place, it's clear now that the A face of the magnet is a north pole. And of course that means the B face is a south pole. We have some very interesting results. Um, I'm going to take all three of these and digitize them uh, to uh, get a better look at the interesting colors and shapes but basically we can create an image uh, with beta particles and a magnet uh, using this radiochromic film and 
I have a lot of ideas for stuff I'd like to do with this film in the future. Um, one of the things that I really like to try is uh, neutron profiling in the reactor because this stuff is supposedly made with lithium. That's a component of the polymer that uh, changes color. And so the film should be sensitive to thermal neutrons and that opens up a whole uh, realm of applications for having fun with this stuff. Anyway, if you have ideas for what to do with the rest of this box of gaff chromic, radiochromic film, let me know. Throw your suggestions down in the uh, comments and I will read and uh, maybe follow up in a year or two <laughs> with another video. Thanks, by the way, for all your patience. I know it, uh, uh, I don't get to make videos very often and uh, um, that's just reality these days. But uh, I do have fun playing around and look forward to uh, doing more uh, with this seeing radiation theme that I started a little while ago. Thanks.